Now, credit markets are set for their worst year since the global financial crisis as investors abandon hope of a late 2018 rally. Bloomberg Barclays Index uh, indicates high yield and investment grade notes are headed for losses in both euros and dollars. The first time all four asset classes have posted negative total returns since 2008. Uh, joining us now, I'm very pleased to say to talk about what uh, dominates thoughts in a boardroom's uh, stateside, including this subject, Charles Otten, co-head of the UBS Industrials Group. Uh, Charles, I feel like the uh, the bringer of doom this morning with all this negativity around uh, credit markets. But let's talk about this. GE clearly putting this very much front and centre for many people. Um, but for somebody who's in these bo- in and out of these boardrooms all the time, is this something that preoccupies companies? They don't want to uh, lever up too much and expose themselves to higher interest rates. Uh, yes, I think it is. And thank you for having me, Anna. Um, I think in the private arena, you see a tolerance level for leverage at a higher level. Uh, So you have uh, many private equity deals being done in the six to seven times EBITDA leverage uh, arena, and that's uh, a backward-looking backward looking measure. Uh, If you're a public company, uh, you tend to be a little more concerned about forward-looking leverage, and that number comes down a little bit to around four times. Mm. Uh, G, as you say, is a good example of a dominant theme in the leverage markets. Uh, There's a huge issue as to whether or not it will stay investment grade or move into sub-investment grade. And that's a lot of paper to move into the sub-investment grade market if it happens. Yeah. And is this something that's going to, is this going to limit M&A or share buybacks by, by companies that you talk to into the future? We don't know yet. Uh, good question. Uh, I think we've seen backing up of the markets the last few days. The second lead market seems a little uh, stretched at the moment. So it's unlikely we'll see uh, substantial things happening between now and the end of the year for this reason if it involves a lot of leverage. Uh, we have seen a very, very large amount of buybacks. Uh, that tends to be the most dominant use of cash at the moment. Or the, uh, the, the, the sense is that that's the greatest use of your own cash if you, if you have it. Um, we were seeing M&A being rewarded very, very well a few years back for uh, bold moves into you know new new areas uh, what we've seen recently is is really a, a, a negative reaction Colfax is the best example uh, maybe this week of, of a negative reaction to an, an M&A move so buybacks have been strong mm. in, in a stress leverage market maybe that's uh, um, dialed back a little bit I've got the function MA go which is the sort of M&A tracker on the Bloomberg and if I just uh, set it so it shows uh, what we're doing on M&A year to date it shows North America up by what 20 percent in terms of value uh, year to date date. But what kinds of M&A then are we talking about companies being focused on? Because for years, you know, businesses are put together as conglomerates and then investors don't like that anymore because they want to pick their own, you know, very niche players, I suppose. Are we still in that theme? Are we still in the, the theme where businesses are getting rid of assets that don't fit their core? Yes, we are. And it's the activist that's uh, driving a lot of that. Uh, the the, the deconglomerization, if that's a proper word, is, is a dominant <laughs> it is theme. <laughs> it is now. is a dominant theme. Uh, we've seen, and G's a good example, many others, uh, companies who have not responded well to being uh, uh, labeled as a conglomerate and, and have taken steps to, to unwind. Uh, sometimes the activist pressure is very blatant. Sometimes it's much more subtle. Uh, and I think people are rediscovering you know, higher multiples as they as they unwind and, and, yes. and we'll see more of that. Help the boardrooms in Europe understand how you deal with activist pressure, would you, Charles? Because this is something you've seen in the United States for a long time. It's a little more nascent in Europe, yes. although it's here with, with a big presence now. You point out to me in your notes before we chatted that some, that it comes in different forms, this yes. kind of pressure. Sometimes it can be quite uh, gentle and constructive and other times it can feel more like a sledgehammer. Exactly right. And, and the, the companies we find deal best with this uh, respond in a listening and a thoughtful way uh, and acknowledge sometimes the points that the activists have and try to work with them. Uh, those that tend to, hit, tend to hit them head on have a more uh, complex and sometimes more uncomfortable time. And so the activist is, is, is merely there to declare victory in terms of an increased share price. Mm. So if they can achieve that in a, in a more subtle way, then they'll do that. And we've seen, we've seen, that, we've seen that morph in the US uh, and people can declare victory now in, in a number of different ways. And, and one other subject I wanted to ask you about, Charles, if we're seeing US corporate balance sheets being tested by higher interest rates, maybe a little less able to do M&A, we'll see. What about Chinese buyers? Do US corporates remain open to Chinese conversations or are they 
put off by President Trump's rhetoric around what kind of scrutiny they'll get from sure. CFIUS and the like? Well, you have CFIUS, you have Trump, and you also have this phenomenon in China, uh, uh, loosely labeled concern about the gray rhinos. So these uh, large conglomerates who were buying uh, significant businesses and now have been perhaps reined in a little bit by their own uh, authorities. So there is some caution in the US about selling to a, a non-US buyer. Uh, and that's manifested both in terms of caution with uh, at some perhaps some a tweet from Trump mm. or uh, more realistically some concern that you won't get through CFIUS, which has been actively uh, slowing down the approvals in the same way that uh, you've seen some of the U.S. deals being slowed down approval wise in, in China.